Jack, you're 70 years young, happy birthday. Did you enjoy your celebrations at the Crown Hall Arena on Saturday and the, and the surprise on the pitch with your, your presents gifted to you before kick-off? Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, I never expected anything like that and just amazing, really. There was a, a huge surprise as well as your gifts. You were, you were made on Saturday Honorary Life Vice President of the Football Club for your services to date. Did that come as a, a complete shock to yeah, you? Yeah, it did, a complete shock. I haven't got a clue that that was happening, so... When he announced it, I still don't understand what it meant, and I've still been speaking to Nicholas saying, "What does it mean? What can I do?" So, like you said, you it came as a, a complete surprise and shock to you. What was your sort of overriding feelings? Was there some tears shed on the pitch? There was a few tears shed, yeah, definitely. Because when I was walking off the pitch, I was carrying some stuff. I thought, "What are the directors doing there?" And then I saw my other Arsenal, and then I thought, "What's she doing here at the match?" So. And then when they stopped me and said, hang on a minute, we want to do this, and brilliant. Does it mean a lot to you to begin It does mean a lot to me. This club means a lot to me. I want this club to get as far as we can, even in the Premiership one. I might not see it, but I want to get it, get him up there. It's been a while since we interviewed you, Jack, so I want to take the opportunity to, to reflect on your, your time at the club. You've been here for over two decades now. That makes you probably sound even older than you are. <laughs> uh, but what's your favourite memories of your time at Rochdale Football Club? Probably when we won promotion and also going to Wembley as well and all things like that. It was absolutely brilliant. And we had some fantastic results over the years when we played Tottenham here and drew to all, then we got to Wembley. Like we got beat at Wembley, but it was still fantastic. Yeah, there must be some players as well during those times that you've oh, kept in touch so with. The players I've had, Ricky Lambert, Gary Jones, Scott Hogan, just to name a few. There's millions of players that have gone through and got onto better things. Are there players that you still keep in touch with? Oh yeah, well? yeah. I mean, I've, I've still got Rio Ferdinand's number from when we made uh, that documentary for Nike. I've still got his phone number. I don't ring him, but I've still got it. Probably dis discontinued <laughs> now, but... The, the fans in the Sandy Lane, I think it was in pre-season, were, were chanting your name and um, you're often stopped around the club on match days for people to come and say hello. Um, that must mean a lot to you as well. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I love it in the sand. That's why I started off in the Sandy Lane when I was nine year old. So I started off nine. The first game I come to was the one against Norwich in the League Cup final. So, and I've been in there since, until I come working at the club. So it's, it's in my heart, the Sandy Lane.